everyone, welcome to this new episode of Caroline Talks. I'm your host, Caroline Hines, film critic and journalist, and today is one of my interviews for the TIFF for the Toronto International Film Festival 2023. And today I'm joined by the director, Nabin Suba, to talk about his film, A Road to a Village, which had its for premiere here at TIFF. And today I am joined by the lead actors. And I do not want to butcher your names. I will ask you to say your names yourselves so that I don't, because I always, I'm always very careful to make sure I pronounce people's names correctly. So um, I'll have them introduce themselves and we'll talk about this film, A Road to a Village, about, I think, consumer um, consumerism globalization <laughs> gentrification and the dangers of capitalism and i'm very interested and i'm very excited to talk about this film because as i told you at the beginning i'm from barbados uh-huh. i'm from the caribbean so we kind of have like psych- uh, similar things with how mm-hmm. globalization and consumerism and western capitalization has affected um i guess you could say indigenous communities so i'm very interested to talk to all three of you about it and today we're joined by our interpreter minso and uh, thank you so much for joining us and doing this for me thank you <laughs> um so as again can you um just introduce yourselves and say your names at the beginning please uh mother yeah i'm an actor mm-hmm. i'm Navin Suba, uh director uh i'm poshwati rai i'm an actor <laughs> thank you um so they play the actually the the lead characters in the film and they're the husband and wife of a little boy called um, Bindre. Um, Bindre. I had it in my head and I hesitated. Bindre. And Bindre is very interesting because he's very influenced by capitalism but he doesn't know that is capitalism. He just knows he wants to wear shades, Mm -hmm. he wants to be on TV, Mm -hmm. and he wants to be the boss. And I think this film is very interesting where all of the characters are struggling with dominance. Mm-hmm. and struggling with um, power dynamics. Yeah. So I want you first to talk, I'm gonna be to talk about your, about being a director, because as a director, you also have have a power dynamic mm-hmm. on your set. So talk about making a film mm-hmm. about power dynamics as a director, because you're kind of like putting your own story, your mm-hmm. own way of looking at the world into this film. Mm-hmm. Uh, my working style is a little different, uh, as you know, you can ask them too, because I uh, I usually you know uh, like to collaborate more, uh, but uh, before you know collaborations, I, I like to say that this is the idea, mm-hmm. and uh, if you have any input or you know if you have any questions or you know if you have a better idea than this. Mm-hmm so we can incorporate in the you know in the film so uh, uh, in this uh, film also we have like a, we have very long pre-productions and uh, most of the cast and crew the cast are, is uh, yeah Daya is a very popular Nepali actor uh, she is also a very known actress uh, she works in theater and films too so, uh, but the uh, crew, most of the crew are very, they, they were working on very first time. So, mm-hmm. we have very long uh, pre-production phases. So, we, like, uh, first we uh, try to understand the Rai community. I'm not, I, I don't belong to Rai community. Mm-hmm. But the issue, uh, the film is on Rai community. So, uh, the other also, the other uh, ca- uh, crew also, have to know about the Rai, how mm. they think, how, what is their philosophy, you know, how they take anything, uh, that, you know, how their worldview is. So it took us quite long mm. to understand this thing, like very basic thing, like uh, uh, they don't understand, uh, they don't, uh, you know, distinguish, distinguish uh, like a blue and green. Ah, uh, okay. uh, yeah, something like that. So we found out that, <laughs> and a lot of things like a, a language. Also, you know, we use uh, for non-Nepali speakers. Mm-hmm. It could be a same, you know. But uh, who speaks Nepali, they can understand the difference between the Nepali language and what the language we use. Uh, we try to like uh, we uh, resource and find out that. Because Nepali is, we use Nepali, mm. but Nepali is second language for Rai people. So how we, how they, you know, uh, construct the grammar. Mm. So we we try to, you know, understand the Rai grammar first. Rai, 
also have a uh, 27 more than 27 right 29 29 languages yeah. their own uh, the community and you know uh, we worked on bantawa bantawa uh, they have a four dialect mm. in between that ba bantawa language so uh, we consulted a linguist and you know and they have suggested us that you know uh, the they use the second language uh, translating the first language so all the process was quite <laughs> you know so it, it was quite long so yeah and you know uh, because yeah but <laughs> <laughs> where did he come from <laughs> yeah so for me I, I, I'm not a linguist, so mm -hmm. I have to, you know, ask a linguist to come. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, even, you know, when we <laughs> develop a character, so when we developed uh, my last character, uh, we work with him mm -hmm. because he's a weaver. So first, it was quite difficult to find find the, you know, uh, the body language, the rhythm, and, uh, you know, uh, this thing. So. We work together, and you know, we found out uh, not only you know uh, director and actor, but the costume designer also came in, and you know, so uh, that way uh, we constructed the Maya. Mm -hmm. And uh, like uh, the Bendra, you 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 know, the, he is very uh, stubborn kind of you know uh, character, but uh, he's from a village. They are from city, mm -hmm. so when we cast it. <laughs> and we we needed to create a chemistry with mm -hmm. uh, family chemistry so we brought them together uh, before 15 days and you know uh, before that uh, we have uh, walks up very long walks up with the children they are all from a village so uh, we get uh, Benry and them together to stay in one house cook themselves and you know get to know each other and other thing is that like uh, they are from city so basically they have a uh, some connections with the uh, uh, village but you know very long time that they are staying in the city so they have lost the you know the, the village uh, all the village connections so uh, I asked them to you know learn from the uh, Bendre, mm -hmm. all the gestures and you know, posters, how he his posters mm -hmm. that will because the mother father is just opposite, like mother father, mm -hmm. a child, uh, kid learn from a mother father, right. they are all physical thing and every, but here, yeah, uh, yeah just opposite, <laughs> way, just opposite, something like that. And uh, in that power dynamics, uh, yeah, yeah, as a you know, I, I'm. Uh, I was in the center, but my uh, work is just to facilitate mm. them to, you know, come up with their uh, ideas and their, you know, all the uh, talents mm. uh, to portray their characters or their uh, work uh, in their respective fields. Mm. Actually, I'm going to ask you both a question, something that you just said that, um, and it occurred to me as you were speaking. Um, First thing first, the, the amount of dialects and languages in that region is a lot, but then I think it's important to highlight, like for a lot of people who don't really think about it, especially if they grew up in North America, just how many languages yeah. there are around the world. Like just in that one small region of Nepal, where you have over two dozen languages. And I'm from the Caribbean and like each country has is very most countries speak English like English is the first language but then you have some that have like Dutch or French um, or even um, Spanish dial dialects and um, sub sub languages if you could if you would say depending on what region you're in I'm from Barbados and our only language is English mm -hmm. and the island is 166 square miles but mm -hmm. Some we have twelve parishes, but mm -hmm. there's always a slight distinction mm -hmm. between the parishes and the dialect in mm -hmm. specific word ways that we we mm -hmm. pronounce certain words mm -hmm. is different. And in this film, um, I think the the language the, one of the first things that, that I really locked mm -hmm. onto to was how um, and it was something I never even thought about, but how commercialism and capitalism changes the way we speak. 
and changes our language. Like there's um, a scene with uh, Milo where he I'm um, speaking to I think it's um, one of the men and the man was like we have a tarp and he's like he never seen a tarp but this is a new word okay. that's being introduced into their into their vocabulary you know they have a word for shades now they have a word for coca-cola that's a that's you know a new word so i want to talk first about language and how you have to basically as performers as actors have to learn a new dialogue uh, for this film because you have to learn how to communicate with the other cast members in a way you didn't have to you have to learn to communicate i, I guess also with your own heritage and your own um, people in a way you never had to. So I want to t talk with you first because the um, <laughs> the interactions <laughs> between um, Miley is it Miley as the, Miley, Miley. Miley Miley the Miley the mom and <laughs> Benjamin like she has a very kind of like antagonistic communication with him. Like everything to some people may think that she's um, a bit rougher to him than my, that um, Miley is, and I think a lot of that has to do with she could see her son slipping away. She sees him becoming more drawn mm -hmm. to the outside world and she's trying to hold on to him because they lost their daughter. So I kind of saw her being rough as a way to like admonish him because she's like, I don't want you to keep slipping away. So I want you to talk about those scenes with Bandra where she's, she seems rough, but me, I guess being a, a woman, it, um, I can see where she's like, a lot of that comes from, from fear. She's afraid for her son. เออเดี๋ยวกูเล่าเรื่องนึงนะครับเอ่อบินเดซอนกับมูกะดาเนี่ยเนี่ยเอ่อวันเลยบันเอสเตติโอบาซากุกุระมาเจเอ่ออุเ
మామూలు బంద what she is explaining mm. is uh, <laughs> it's okay <laughs> yeah what uh, we uh, you know uh, like a we, uh, there's a fault mm-hmm. but uh, uh, in nepali uh, there's a uh, simple verb like a for uh, example stances mm-hmm. and uh, but uh, in rai uh, when they use the verb they put a ko uh behind mm. so when we speak uh, they speak a uh, simple dances mm-hmm. they put that go in dance school so it became a very new you know fra- mm. uh, you know word itself right. because uh in nepali it's a dances but because they took uh, from that when they translate the ko from their own right. native language and put in uh, dances that made it a dance school so <laughs> it's itself a new right. new word it's a right word. yeah and uh, uh it's a sino uh, tibetan language so uh no uh, the pronunciation uh, is very different from the usual nepali right. uh in their uh, uh native language so when you, they s- use uh, some words here the but they put no there so makes very different so very complicated uh, yeah, it's quite complicated <laughs> so this is any camera royal and it's already garo pun de malai che but mostly je maile je ekdam hai bhanu na kinabhane hami te tai thau ma gaeko na le pani tyanko manche kati kura garna bhayin te ni tyo kura le che dherai basi sake pachi sundha sundha te le ek khalgo te huncha ni bani dimag lai garchan train garcha ni so tyo kura bada che mala chai ekdam sajilo bhayo kina mane gaun ko manche haru tesa chai bindra ta jaile ma sange hunthyo haina dima hunthyo so tesari kaam garda chai as an actor character ko lagi chai sajilo bhayo thyo so we had gone to the location 15 or 20 days prior to the shooting mm-hmm. so which kind of Uh, led me to talk well, with the villagers right. also so i also kind of learned from them yeah. mm. and and what about um the relationship of <laughs> the mother and son that they were saying like they're very like i they're in, they're really the differences between the relationships is very interesting to me because like the mom is as i mentioned to me she she conveys fear mm-hmm. like she's afraid of her son yeah. um le- lose leaving like her daughter did so how did you work um, how did the two of you work on like creating that um that aspect mm-hmm. of the mom because i think she's she's a character that can be easily misunderstood yes yeah. if if people just look at the surface level where people mm-hmm. just think oh she's just being rough she's just being mm-hmm. unfair you know mm-hmm. she's almost like the good guy compared to the dad who's mm-hmm. like more softer and mm-hmm. he has the yeah. fun side but i think is like she's looking at it from a place of fear whereas for the dad he had kind of put the daughter missing yeah. at the back of his head he didn't want to think about it so he wasn't seeing the connection the same way she did so i want you to talk about i'm going to ask you about that but i want you to talk about first like creating the aspect of the character so like i to me she hurt me she she broke my heart because i could just see like she was so close to like losing herself but she was just i have to hold on to this my marriage i have to hold on to my son and she other side she could be easily misunderstood yeah mm-hmm. yeah uh when we have done the script analysis phase mm-hmm. and we gone through a lot of why she is like that and why uh mm-hmm. uh my life is like that uh we found out as you you know interpreted uh, you know uh, right now that you know why mother is so strict mm-hmm. but if you see the when uh, the father is absent then mother becomes more you know uh, caring right. and giving and some like that but when father is around and you know she's she seems more tougher but as you say that it triggered by her fear mm-hmm. so we found out that in our script analysis okay. so that how we you know we we uh, ask her to play and she also you know uh find out that okay my character uh, behave like this because of that losing a uh, you know daughter mm-hmm. and uh, she wants to be more strict so that uh, she can hold on uh, her on the child mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. that was the uh, first idea and you also when you like the new one is the amro community magic prize you see 
so the, the first inspiration to uh, towards my approach to the character was uh, that the community that I belong to uh, have a woman in front who women who handle the household works mm -hmm. and then they are the ones in charge of uh, looking for looking for their sons and so t towards their children so that was my first inspiration to be in, uh, in my own community but then uh, like director Naveen said after that it was a lot of script, script analysis and finding it from there too. Mm. So is your um for in your culture, is it um, more of a ma matriarchal society? Yeah, it's matriarchal. Ah, yeah. that explains a lot, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for uh, for playing the dad, as I said, like he's kind of the opposite of the mom, which I was actually surprised by. Um, like he's very soft, but he's also very playful. And um, and the thing about him, he is one. He he's very complex in that you can tell he's struggling with being seen as a man and it's very interesting because there's another film that i saw um that kind of has this whole I, that sh that's kind of showing how the patriarchal societies negatively affect men and we know like men benefit from patriarchy but depending on the personality of the man where he might not necessarily be fully accepting of it but he's kind of still repressed by that because he's trying to fit expectations that he doesn't want to meet mm -hmm. so for you i want to ask you about your how you perceive patriarchy and how it and how it um in, in informed the way you played um Miley, be, um, Malai because I he at first started out very easygoing he didn't have any pressure mm -hmm. but then his son started demanding more and more and like, it went from watch from wanting shades to wanting electricity to wanting a TV and we know it can only escalate from there he he wanted a video game <laughs> you know he wanted Nike yeah, shoes it'll just keep going yeah. and going so i want your inter um how you're on how your your feelings about patriarchy informed your uh, performance Kere practice practice I community. Even though she said that uh, uh, also the community that we live in has a female as the leading household, mm -hmm. but I feel like now in general uh, it has already gone to the patriarchal society mm -hmm. as well. Because uh, even in the film, even when Miley suggests something to Myla, there are scenes where she suggests something or she uh, gives advice to him. Mm -hmm. Myla does take the decision himself, and then or this was the second movie woman. The person that got married, they say, "What I did, my little daughter, go you will play the person." Oh yeah, and then like you said, uh, it's it was the patriarchy that was kind of pushing him that he needs to fulfill his son's desire, mm -hmm. and then uh, it's uh, uh, kind of like you said that patriarchy uh, will also feed him the feed him the uh, inferiority complex that uh, led him to, led him to the film mm -hmm. unfolds. 
अनि अर्को इन्ट्रेस्टिङ कुरा चाहिँ के हुन्छ भने आमासँग चाहिँ डराउनु पर्ने भिन्दै जो रियलमा तर मसँग चाहिँ डराउँथ्यो होइन त्यसले पनि मलाई त्यो काम गर्नु सजिलो छ अफ स्क्रिनमा चाहिँ मसँग नजिक नआउने उसँग म क्रिकेट क्रिकेट लगेँ होइन उसलाई के अरे मनपर्ने कपडाहरू क्रिकेट लगेथेँ क्रिकेट खेल्थेँ र पनि ऊ मसँग नजिक नआउने मैले नजिक बनाउनुको लागि उसले उसलाई त्यो जति अफ स्क्रिनमा के भने स्ट्रगल गरे नि त्यसले पनि एक किसिमको मलाई त्यो काम गरेको छ कि मतलब उसलाई चाहिँ मैले नजिक बनाउनु पर्छ मेरो आफ्नो बनाउनु पर्छ भनेर त्यसले पनि इन्ट्रेस्टिङ काम गरेको छ सो वाइल ट्राइङ टु क्रिएट अ केमिस्ट्री विथ द ट्राइल एक्टर ही Uh, he he bought him a lot of gifts <laughs> like uh, cricket bats and balls oh. and he tried to play with him as well. Yeah. But then even though he tried a lot, the uh, the child actor wouldn't be so close to him. Mm. Rather, he would be so close to the mom. Right. So uh, he th- that helped him a lot to uh, understand the character and how he approaches uh, the two uh, relationship as well. Mm. So it's kind of interesting. So um, the on camera Benjure is loves gifts. He loves all of those things, but the the uh, the, uh, the real actor he did it, so I, and he wanted more of a maternal connection or parental connect uh, connection with you. But I think that's interesting because that's how kids are. You know, kids are very simple about the character of Benjamin. As I, uh, um, he's a, as a child, he's very simple. He knows what he wants. But he's very complex in how he goes about yeah. getting what he wants. Yeah. So he, he's a manipulator. Yeah. He knows how to mm. bargain with his parents about asking yeah. for. Say if you want me to do my homework, mm-hmm. give me this because he knows his education mm-hmm. is very important. Because I think there's a script on the wall where it says, um, basically, it's saying that education is the greatest wealth we can ever have. You know, yeah. without education, you really can't have any yeah. true wealth. And he knows that. He understands that yeah. inherently, yeah. but he doesn't understand the consequences. So talk about building the story around a little boy who's very simple in his wants, but very complex in how he goes about getting what he wants. Yeah. Uh, Uh, yeah we, we want to say in layers like a like a innocence mm-hmm. and how more modernity comes and how the innocence goes away and how the innocence goes away then it becomes more you know uh, like a it's kind of corrupt mm-hmm. so uh, that uh, we try to portray with the bendri you know mm-hmm. that, that idea was idea was there before before and you know uh, Yeah, when we cast uh, during the casting process, we selected uh, at least four, five, uh, you know, kids to play the role, and our casting director was interested more on another. Mm. Uh, he is more, you know, a very simple guy, or some very shy nature, and Benre uh, uh, Prasan uh, uh, is a very uh, playful, you know, mm-hmm. uh, in the village. Uh, I found out that he knows every dog, you know. Mm-hmm. When uh, and uh, mm-hmm. there is a, there was a small town, mm-hmm. some shops were there, and you know he was playing there alone and with the dogs, you know, mm-hmm. around him, and you know, and quite stolen. Like uh, sometimes he he will be very like uh, you know, okay, uh, when we were shooting, uh, we're taking the shots, and he will say. Um, that was a seven take or eight take. Then he would say, "Okay, this is the last one. You know, <laughs> and I'm not going to give you another take." So that thing was there before, Ooh. even d- during the casting. So we thought he will portray. You know, yeah, yeah we'll have that naughtiness uh, is there. So uh, we cast, mm-hmm. we casted him. So it, it helped out a lot, and. Uh, Another thing is that uh, there are a lot of childrens, and you know the uh, the uh, not only the as you said the when we started this interview, the power play mm-hmm. was there between them also. Right. So we tried to <coughs> did we play with it also? So like uh, when he used to be more strong, and we we say okay. Now we will ca- uh, you're not going to play this role. Right. We'll cast some some right. other and he will be very obedient. Then again, I uh, you play with him too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh uh that helped us a lot and uh he's very uh, you know very brilliant and very sharp uh, kid. Mm-hmm. So he learned the very fast and 
uh, within 15 or 20 days we have a difficulty working with him but after that uh, he was so you know spontaneous and you know so uh, into the character that sometimes you know, mother father have to mm. deal with it you know mm. they are professional actors but you know <laughs> yeah. they have to compete with the you know uh, Benre. so it was quite interesting uh, process itself for us to right. learn how to work with the children right and yeah. th like in talking about the power dynamics the thing about people always think only adults are yeah. crave power but kids crave power too because yes, yes. they like I'm being very, I think he has um, he exemplifies it very well where he realizes how um, powerful power is yeah. you know how having access to right. something gives him power gives him hierarchy gives yeah. him social status yeah. even in the kids because it's like a microcosm you know a school is like a microcosm of a society yeah. you have like you have the leader who's like if I have the coke the yeah. using a bottle of coke i was just like i'm like first and first coke is not even the best one i think Pepsi yeah. is better but, <laughs> but you know he's like, he's like i have the i have the bottle of coca-cola if you follow me yeah. i'll give you this because it's like uh, it's like gold to these kids you know yeah. they're like it's sweet it's it's it's, yeah. it's bubbly they saw it on tv so that is a status symbol mm. so i thought it was brilliant how you have the kids looking and say okay i know this person has power this person has something that i want so i have to follow it and then you switch it up with the with using um the picture um a matriarchal society where the little girl and um, i think it stays at taya, taya she yeah. was like well you don't want me to be in your clique <laughs> because i'm a I'm girls because he starts to separate by gender yeah. but then she was like i have something that all of you want so if you want this follow me so i want to ask you about giving the female character so mm -hmm. much say in the film, talking with the mama, then having the little girl, um, Taya, um, and even the grandmother, like she was, she had power too over the dad because she was like, I have this thing that you want. So talk about giving the female characters their own, um, their own power within this, within the story. It seems it's very subtle, but it's there. Yeah. 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 I think that comes from our, uh, you know, uh, subconscious, uh, because I, I belong to not community mm -hmm. it's not we are very close with the Thai community and our uh, you know uh, community also matriarchal mm -hmm. so lot lot of you know household works or you know the decision making process is done by mothers and obviously maybe uh, in my uh, my family too my mother is the uh, in center, you know, uh, whatever she decides, we just obey as a mm -hmm. children. So that thing was there, maybe. So it came out like that. And other thing is that uh, consciously, I say that you know, uh, yeah, uh, you know, because there's just some problem uh, uh, our society is facing, mm -hmm. like uh, as you say, the patriarchy is there. And there are other other power dynamics is playing like a class is there and you know a lot of things are there but you know uh, to create a humanity uh, I think we, we should uh, be more uh, uh, open to the right. diverse ideas the diverse diverse thoughts so uh, if you look at my uh, previous films too uh, mother are always there and mm -hmm. the uh, women are in the center right. so that also there because of it i think mm. uh, minso uh, you're sitting quite by i actually have a question for you because the interesting thing about this film it also talks as i mentioned power dynamics and capitalism but it talks about the generation gap between old and young yeah. you know and i want to ask you as a younger person um because i can see binge binge like for me would be like i grew up in the generation of learning about the world wide web i was there when <laughs> when the internet went live i was there when the first cell phones became i'm old i'm dating myself but i'm 40 so i was there when all of that happened and um now we have the generation z is it generation yeah, yeah. z like there there's a disconnect where like they don't appreciate not being able to have internet you know yeah. they don't appreciate the struggle of having to use a phone booth <laughs> to make the phone call so for you i want to ask you because bendre is a representation of that he's he's very caught up in the new 
he, he's very caught up in the flashy, you know, the, the, the TV and all of this. But he's also, I think, representing how um, capitalism takes, especially people from indigenous communities, away from their communities. You know, creates that separation from appreciation of culture and respect to our elders. Yeah. You know, like he doesn't have any, he didn't have any respect for his yeah. father and the elders at all. And I think a lot of that has to do with capitalism and how, especially westernization, takes away from the appreciation of um, indigenous and cultural um, uh, respect and beliefs. I want to ask you about your interpretation of the film and how you saw um, maybe perhaps maybe even not seeing yourself in Midrick, but perhaps people that you knew in a character like that. I'm, I'm so sorry. I got so caught off guard. <laughs> I know the noise. I know because I surprised you with asking. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Take your time to think about it. Maybe can you repeat? Um, yeah. Uh, what did, how did you movie. interpret the film as a younger person uh, um, from from um, from your coming from your community and how has not only seen the film made you think perhaps about capitalism mm -hmm. but also westernization and how westernization um, pulls young people away from their cultures and appreciating cultural um, uh, traditions, you know? Like, he doesn't respect the traditions. And like when he cut up the film, mm -hmm. the, the negative, I was upset because I was like, negatives are valuable now. Yeah. Like, yeah. negatives cost money. He does, but he doesn't see mm -hmm. the value in a negative, you know? He doesn't see also the value to the parents because it was a picture of their daughter. It was a negative of a picture of thing, but he doesn't value that. He doesn't value, he, he thinks, for instance, using the TV as an example, he sees like the flat screen TV and he sees that as being valuable, mm -hmm. but he doesn't understand the value of an actual negative itself. Those things cost money now, mm -hmm. you know? So I want your, perspe your, your pers um, perspective on the film mm -hmm. and possibly on westernization and how it pulls on people away from their cultures. Yeah, okay. So I was involved in the project from the very, not from the very beginning, mm -hmm. but I was you know, involved in the project from pre-production. Oh, so I didn't I, know. Yeah, I, I was initially, I initially joined as the assistant director, mm -hmm. but then I started handling the production side. So I kind of knew what uh, Naveen, director Naveen was trying to do with the film and oh, okay. what the initial idea of the script was. So uh, I definitely resonated with the uh, film's idea of having, uh, trying to find your own identity in the midst of globalization mm -hmm. and uh, kind of preserving the culture as well. And uh, like like you said, from if I, if I have to look, say it from a younger side, it's definitely uh, the other side is much more appealing and pleasing. But then uh, younger generation ha also have to be educated about their roots, mm -hmm. and then that's something uh, that the film kind of uh, also t uh, tries to talk about that younger generation uh, needs to be. Uh, educated about their roots or their culture from household and then not just how the household it's all it also needs to go uh, outside the household as well so uh, I guess I I do agree that uh, I guess uh, I don't know what else to say about it uh, <laughs> that's it I guess. it's okay um, yeah I think the film it like you managed to pack so much um, mm -hmm. I think so many layers into the film because, and I think for, as I said at the beginning, coming from being an immigrant myself, um, like watching Canadian films on TV when I was younger, um, we, I had this idea of what Canada would be like. You know, I had this, per, this perception of Canada being perfect. You know, there's a saying that we have, um, the grass is always greener on the other side. You know, we think that everything is perfect on the other side not many people dye their grass like it's fake but and then when i moved here i learned the reality of what canada is you know like you i have race there's racism sexism mm -hmm. and then there's like how in talking about how indigenous people are treated like the first nations people are so um disenfranchised and all of this and and the film touches i think on that it doesn't really talk it doesn't really talk about immigration explicitly but there's a character who moved away, who moved uh, to work abroad, and he came back and he said, I, I don't want to go, because he's like, I miss home. You know, I miss um, I miss the um, the millet wine. You know, it's the simple things. And and I think for a lot of people, like as the world, I always say as the world is progressing, we're regressing. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we technology brings so much advancements, but it also takes away so much from us. And the film does explicitly say that, especially I think, for, for the dad, it takes so much away from him, like, 
we talked about it took his um self-confidence away you know like yeah. he like trying to meet these demands he's feeling more insecure about as a person and i want you so i want each of you to talk about how um making this film helped you to maybe appreciate your culture more and perhaps appreciate your culture traditions more because i think making films like this is very important because it helps us to realize <laughs> the grass is not always greener on the other side yeah. and that with progression comes cost there's always a cost and it's always a personal cost there's a personal cost to everyone like moving to canada i had no idea how much i would miss the ocean i miss the beach every day mm -hmm. you know and i never thought about that when i when i thought about moving here you know i thought i would be fine but i i've been here 16 years and every day i look out my window because we live on the 17th floor of our mm -hmm. building and all i see is land mm -hmm. but back home if i had been home i would be seeing ocean so like, I still every day get up and I still like I miss the beach. So that for me is a personal cost. So, so for each of you, I want to talk about your perspectives on how this film helped you appreciate um, your culture and maybe think about it in a way you hadn't thought about it before. Okay. <laughs> To get a solid very good, the more nation while a curale or to keep a curale appeal got it up on it is with the consequences tones or until you were a you film at the public come where they got the area to side drop of the culture or could I like what you appreciate going to see the world public man of a city man I could hear it but तर बस में एक तो जब तुम मोर गांव पुक्सू फिर कई रिचुअल करने को लगे तर तिल्ले मतलब मतलब तानी रहेगा वो ऐसा तर धेरी कुरा आ रही है छुट्टी के यों से इसलिए मतलब इस तो धेरी कुरा आपको ये रिश्ता के पास ही तो ठाउं से धेरी छुट्टे रह जाने से तर ये तो फैमिली इसके कल्चर का फिलोसोफी सब so uh, even though he was brought up, uh, born and raised in his village, he moved uh, to the city and then has been in the city for a very long while now and then only goes back to his village when there's uh, some ritual or something, uh, some work. Mm -hmm. uh, so while working on this film and then uh, working on the strip analysis for the character's philosophy and uh, uh, cultural aspect, he ha had the opportunity to revisit his childhood all over there. Mm -hmm. Just Bindre is the last time I was in the first place. 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 I पिंद्रे पन समझे रा मेरो बाप पापा लाई पनी समझे दिल्ली so even though he played the Myla character, he resonated a lot with the Bindre character as well because uh, he kind he feels like he was uh, like Bindre sometime, uh, some sometime ago. So he was like uh, he was like how Bindre is uh, trying uh, again trying for electricity, trying uh, uh, trying for tr trying to go to the city and then getting lost over there. And then uh, if, uh, while visiting with Bindre, he also kind of missed his father a lot. अन्य और बता यार तो तो पक्के होने हो मायले मेरो अपनो मूल्य मानने रहा जाते मेरो कल्चर अथवा मेरो सोसाइटी में होने जाते ते ते सुखी बंद रहता है तो जाते इम्पोर्टेन्ट थे तो सीज़ से ने फ्लिम करे ना देरे कुरा आ रहे से आजे मौत हो गया शायद तुझे सो लाइक यू सेड वाइल वर्किंग ऑन द फ्लिम ही understood a lot he understood and uh, about the importance of his culture and then uh, everything uh, the culture and every aspect of like you're talking about mm. and for you there yeah, uh, every year he goes to his village to mm. perform a ritual mm. so uh, if he doesn't perform that ritual uh, he have some problem mm -hmm. you know, that physical problem or other problems also so you know uh, he's very rooted to uh, indigenity so belonging, you know, to go back and you know, worship 
the uh, nature and, and, and the ancestors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, there's a, uh, we try to like uh, put a lot of layers, as you say, that, you know, if you look at uh, craft wise also, uh, we don't use because the right people say that there is no hierarchy in their mm-hmm. community. So, uh, because the gender, women, uh, gender also. So, <coughs> so, uh, but in film, you know, uh, if you go little bit go up the camera, it will mean different thing. Mm-hmm. If you go little down, so where uh, to find out that the how uh, we can say that their philosophy in the craft it was quite challenging and we use that if you look at the inside the family we mostly use uh, camera angles uh, parallel uh, parallel to their eyes not going up or not going down and they also say that they are very down to not uh, or Mm-hmm. nature so we try to you know we didn't use when inside the house we we stayed with them down to the earth the camera right yeah uh, most of the time the camera uh, uh, was in the floor mm-hmm. because uh, they say that we are the uh, you know son and daughters of the earth right so that way we try to convey it and uh, like a, we are very harmonious and giving a space, uh, like a, a, it, it, all indigenous people say that you know, uh, we share the earth, right? Mm-hmm. And everybody have a space. Uh, not uh, this is mine, not that, that's yours. The thought is not there. So uh, to portray that, you know, we have to uh, to create the harmony. We try to always in a flow, right. not static, you know, uh, in a flow, try try that to bring that feelings or that, that philosophy with that. And for me also, you know, uh, basically, you know, uh, I do more uh, films on indigenous people, like uh, uh, my previous one, uh, it was on my own community, mm. it talks about, uh, about uh, a freedom of a woman and you know it talks a lot about the indigenous culture and uh, this one also so <laughs> yeah a uh, lot of players like uh, I found out uh, as you say that the uh, slogan written in the you know on the school wall, yeah. Uh, yeah, school wall uh, like uh, and uh, if you look at all the uh, if you look at when the, that goes to the uh, window and you see most of the window are parallel, you know? mm-hmm. the rod will be a parallel, but use, we use instead of, you know, down like a jail, you know. And, uh, you know, our, you know, the education system use uh, this as a tool to make or, you know, obedient citizens, mm-hmm. like, a, uh, uh, so, uh, so those lot of elements uh, we try to portray there, and uh, for me also because I'm very, you know, sometimes as a filmmaker, you know, uh, uh, I questions myself, uh, what is my, you know, voice. Mm-hmm. So uh, for me, uh, uh, to create more humanity right. is my goal uh, or my art. So how can I get there? Uh, if I, you know, uh, deal these subjects uh, very uh, in depth mm. and uh, uh, multi layer, not uh, staying on one side. Mm. Like I'm an indigenous, so my indigenous ness is uh, greater than the others. If I start to say that, then you know. That what uh, what uh, the world is facing right now, mm. the problem okay. that came uh, came from, you know, you're trying to make others.
as you are. Yeah. You know, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. So here also you see the road is there, but I try to, uh, you know, there's a possibility also, that's a hope also, but the road also brings a despair, right? Mm -hmm. So we try to balance it. It's not uh, only one thing. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, this uh, film gave me those, you know, uh, you know, perspective, mm. made my perspective more clear. Okay. Okay. Um, we have to wrap up now, but thank you so much all for you yeah. for joining me to talk about the film, A Road to a Village. Um, I hope you have a great festival season and enjoy your time here in Toronto. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. thank you so much. Thank you. So everyone, that was another episode of Carolyn Talks, and this is one of my episodes for the 2023 Toronto International Film Festival. This was my discussion with director Nabin Suba and lead actors Dea Hang Rai and Pashupati Rai for their film A Road to a Village, which is a film from Nepal that I genuinely loved. I honestly, I keep saying this, but honestly, this year for Tiff, all of the films I saw, I loved. And I love them for different reasons. I love them for what they are. I love them for how they made me feel. And I love them for the work that the filmmakers and their cast and the production teams and everyone put into these films. In a discussion that I had with um, Nara Wilner, who was the Canadian programmer for TIFF this year, all of the films that I saw had a similar theme of empathy and finding empathy for yourself and also self-discovery, but also loss and grief and and loss and grief in different things. Like sometimes loss, many times loss and grief that isn't attributed only with death, you know, with losing a family or losing a loved one or losing something tangible, something, sometimes it can be an intangible thing that you lose. And in this film, uh, it was about these people in this small Nepalese um, community lo um, losing their culture due to westernization, due to globalization and capitalism, you know, losing touch with their with each other, with their friendships, with each other, with their close, um, with their communities, uh, their sense of community with each other. And like that comes through in this film a lot. And it's also, again, about a, a parent being afraid to lose her child and a father not realizing that he's losing his child, you know, or wanting to forget the loss of a child. And I really think that Nabin did such a fantastic job with this film. They have so many challenges, as you heard in the interview they had to learn a completely new language and dialect to, um, for, to play their characters as well as to communicate with the local um, community in where, where they filmed because like, as um, they are hang at uh, Pastor Patti's side, like, they're not from that particular community, you know? So their language and dialect was different and it's the same country, but the language and dialect is completely different. So they have to learn this and as well, like, perform and grow close to each other and grow closer with the young actor who played their son whose name is Prasan Rai and um like, I think they did I think they did such a, a great job with this film and their performances were really good and nuanced I really in um in um in particular really gravitate towards the mother character because she was so um empathetic and she was so nuanced and lyrics I really appreciate the way that Nabin wrote, hit, wrote her as well as the way that she the character was played. But um, thank you so much to all three of them for joining me as well as their interpreter, Min So Limbu, who was not only who had to, um, it wasn't mentioned in the interview, but he told me afterwards, like he wasn't prepared to, to perform interpreting services because the person that was scheduled to do it, the plans fell through at the last minute. So he had to perform the interpretation for their interviews that day. So like I commend him for what he was able to do and like try because interpreting is a very hard job. It's not just translating uh, what I'm saying to them and translating it back. It's about making sure the language works because of the, the you know, like what a word that may exist in English may not necessarily exist in Nepalese in the exact same way or it may need recontextualizing. And that, which is, uh, again, something that we discussed in the interview itself because that's something they had to learn for their roles. But I appreciate Minso for taking the time to join us. And also, I was so happy and, and happy to learn that he was um, on the production team for the film. So he, we, I was I, I was inspired to ask him on the spot. And I was like, you know what, he's here. Let me ask him a question. And then I learned about his perspective on working on the production for the film. So that was great to know. So thank you so much, Minso, for sharing that with us. And thank you so much to everyone for listening to this episode of Carolyn Talks and for all of my other episodes of Carolyn Talks. If you are a veteran listener, <laughs> thank you so much for staying with me all of this time. This I've been doing this for a few years now. 
And thank you so much for being with me. And for any new listeners, thank you so much for listening to this episode. And I hope you enjoy previous episodes that you will feel inclined to listen to at the future episodes that I will be posting. And I appreciate the support. I, I created a um a GoFundMe. So you can find the GoFundMe under my name, Carolyn Hines, because it has been a little bit difficult for me financially recently because of the strike in Hollywood. And I it, it's been impacting my work. I'm not getting pitches accepted. So I created a GoFundMe in my name. You can contribute there. I also have a PayPal link in the description box for the podcast as well as in my YouTube channel. So I appreciate any um, funds that can be donated to me. It goes towards my work. It's not going to go towards me personally, like for spend thrifting or whatever is going to go towards funding my work and as well as hosting the um, podcast and YouTube channel because I do have to pay a hosting fee for the website that I that host that web host my podcast and as well as for my R3 page where the links for all of my writing is is posted uh, that's on there as well as some other subscription fees that is related towards my work as well as for equipment and travel. I'm hoping to do more traveling for film festival coverage this year. I'm looking to cover Korea in October. So I work with an editor, but I might not be able to, we might not be able to afford everything. So any additional funds that can be given, it's greatly appreciated. Um, The GoFundMe link I will place in the description box as well. And um, you can find the YouTube, the video version of this interview on my YouTube page. That's at, that's YouTube at Carolyn Heinz. That's at symbol carolyn underscore heinz h-i-n-d-s find all of my tiff coverage there as well as those for african american film critics association and other carolyn talks interviews find me on instagram and twitter at carrie saying h12 that's c-a-r-r-e saying h12 talk to me i'm always talking about film tvs music politics or random stuff on twitter and i post links to my work on instagram as well as pictures of my dog and my dog Yoko and flowers as well as my travels when I cover film festivals I do many vlogs and whatnot and I post those on my Instagram as well you can find the hashtags Carolyn Talks as well as SHWH TIFF 23 to find all of my coverage for TIFF linked in my social media that way and um, again thank you so much to everyone for who's been taking the time to talk with me to me and I really appreciate the listeners and the interviews and I hope everyone enjoys these interviews And um, until the next episode of Carolyn Talks, everyone stay safe. Bye.